Thanks for staying with us. Now, we are working from home, as you can see. I mean, today is quite an interesting day. Um, we are discussing the diasporan impact on the current ongoing protest or the, the NSAS protest. And remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at plus TV Africa or at We Show Africa one with the hashtag Waze Show, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038463. Nasa, I think you have some comments for us. Yes, from Ade. Go ahead. Okay, so Ade says, I messaged on Friday that we're facing it together. Protest is still ongoing. Now at the High Commission area and Aldridge in London. Nigerians have been pushed to the wall, so no going back. We have to face it once and for all. The president should come out in public at town hall meetings to address the public and commence action. In England, we say less talk, more work. Absolutely. So you were going to say something before we went on the break, NASA. You were going to ask a question to Dr. That's Dr. correct, yes. So I was going to, Dr. Dr. Lofumila, I was going to ask, right? So my, my friend, Uti and I, we're having this conversation, you know, we're having this protest and we're saying we want reforms, we want an overhauling. But I, one question that keeps coming to mind is the people that make up SARS did not come from another country. They originated from Nigeria. They're Nigerian people. They just have guns. But that's, that's character, that characteristic, that behavior, that behavioral flaw that they have, we see it. We see it at play in our workplaces, in our homes, individuals. So like today, I put up a post saying that if, um, if you molest young girls or if you're, if you, um, if you're what's it called with your subordinates, you're also, they're SARS in you because if there's a behavioral pro problem that makes you do what you're doing, right? So we want to end SARS, but we have to look inwards as well because if we replace the, the current people in SARS, what kind of people are we replacing? So there has to be a, a behavioral mind, I mean, a behavioral change or shift or a mind shift. Mm. You know, how are we going to address that? Because that's also part of the concerns about having a leader. We don't trust each other. That's the truth. We don't know that the next person is going to get some money and then just go and do it because we're very self-centered. I hear people saying, ah, when I get into government, I'm going to chop my own too. That's how we are as mm. a people. Friends say this to me. Absolutely. Go ahead, Dr. Fumi. Dr. So um, talking about, about the possibility that everybody has a little bit of SARS in them, maybe that's true, maybe that's not. But, but the thing here is that if I would use some sort of a medical analogy here, if you'd allow me, sure. if you have cancer somewhere, yeah, the answer to it, first of all, is you will cut that place out. Now, cancer cells are normal cells that start to misbehave and multiply without control. So they are usually not foreign cells that come out from nowhere. They are your normal cells. Then mm. they start to control. Now there's a mechanism where the body controls um, cell multiplication. For instance, your hair will not just start growing anyhow. Do you understand? Your nose mm -hmm. will not just start growing. Now, if it starts to do that, that that's is an abomination. That's an abomination, that's an abnormality. So what you do is you will cut that place out then you focus on the rest of your body to see what you can do so that that kind of thing doesn't happen again. It's mm. the same thing with SARS. SARS has proven itself from 1992 to 2020, almost 30 years, to be more of a negative than a positive. There are barely 10,000 people in SARS. We have a country of 200 million people. They cannot hold us to ransom. It needs to go. Now, going back to your question of what we do with the rest of the people, part of the five for five is that we know that a lot of these SARS people are pretty much animals that just don't reason like the rest of us. So one of the things that we've put there is a psychological evaluation for policemen. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? And it needs to be regular. It needs to be done periodically. And it has to be independently verified. Yes. Like it? Yes, it will be independently okay. verified. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Maybe you so should finish. It will, it will be independently verified, and it will be done periodically, so that you you're sure that people that you're giving guns to, they are people who are mentally competent to hold guns. I read one very sad story today. A man was coming back from church with his wife and his four kids in a tricycle. So Do you understand? And this man was stopped by policemen on the road for 2,000 naira. He said he didn't have. They shot at him, killed his wife. A bullet went through his jaw. He has four kids. How do you explain that? 
How do you explain mm-hmm. that? Okay. And the funny thing is, do you know Nigerian police, do they account for bullets? You know bullets are supposed to be registered. You can you, you are not supposed to go out with 30 bullets, come back with 17. And nobody's uh, asking where, where the 13 well, bullets have gone. Dr. Al Harvey, I'd like to come in here because what NASA is saying, this yeah. animalistic nature that you're talking about is inherent in all of us, right? Yeah. So what is the point? Because little power, okay, yesterday night, and because of the gridlock, I had to go through, my friend had to call um, her estate to allow me go through the gates that they go through with stickers just to let me bypass the, the protesters to be able to get home, you know? And the security man at the gate there was already raising his shoulders, right? He is already he is already feeling like I have power because they say power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, power corrupts absolutely. absolutely. So what? I mean, what gives? What gives tomorrow? Even with all the psychological evaluation, because police brutality is is seen everywhere in the world. What gives that when we decide to do all those reforms that we will still not be saddled? With this same crop of people, even if they overhaul the entire 10,000 SARS officials, what gives that we will not still come back to this place where we're at? What is the guarantee? Yes, good question. So I'll tell you the answer to that. Thank God you mentioned police brutality is possible all over the world and it happens all over the world. Another thing I was going to tell you is that human beings are pretty much the same all over the world. It is not just Nigerians that have the propensity to misbehave. Every single human being, regardless of color, has that propensity. But one thing I will shock you, and I'll tell you now, is that a British person, a British white person in the UK would follow their laws, would, would, would behave properly. But that same British white person, if he's maybe Shell or Chevron or whatever, he will go to Delta State or River State, start giving them bribes, start to join that culture of corruption because there's a culture of corruption. Do you understand? Culture shift. Culture shift. Exactly. So it has nothing to do with the people, but mm-hmm. the system. So mm-hmm. if you're going to, if you're going to really change anything at all, we need to create a system that can run independently of people. A system of mm-hmm. checks and balances. A system mm-hmm. where yes. no police on his own can unilaterally arrest, lock up a person. And somehow the person disappears and there is no trace. Because what and nobody is questioned. Sorry? And nobody is questioned. Exactly. Because what they actually do, I've been following this Akuzu Sass story. What they do is this. Hmm. They pick up a young person. There is no record that they picked up the person. They lock hmm. that person up. They torture them and torture them. The ones they can get bribes from, they get bribes from, they release. The ones that don't have any bribes, they shoot them extrajudicially, throw them in the Ezu River. So when you go I even them, heard that they also have best their organs exactly, and sell to exactly. exactly. So the question then becomes so you go to that police station and you say, Oh, we're looking for our child. They'll tell you we don't have him. Um, go and check our records and our register. The name is not there. Whereas that person is locked up in their rooms there, being tortured, being harassed. Do you understand? Or, and, and, or probably dead. Or probably okay. dead. Comments from our audience. Let me just quickly take one. This is quite sad. This he says that's some OVA. He says the problem is that our government is selfish and wicked. We have practically lost our trust in them. They are too old to come up with progressive ideas. I support the youth with my whole heart. I was a victim of SARS 1995. I spent 10 years behind bars for committing no offense because I mm. have no right. It is time for us to ask for our right, and hmm. the leaders have failed us. President Buhari has no empathy. He is, um, uh, he's calling him sorts, all sorts of names, and um, he has to back our request. We want good governance and accountability. It's not just about answers. Let them bring the bad eggs to book openly. Then we will leave the street. I, I think it's just to, it's just alluding to what you are saying, um, Dr. Dr. Habe. So, um, Isi, you have some comments with you. Let me take one more. Then okay. I would, uh, I'll ask. Angela says, "Oh no, not Angela. The northern youth will join the protest. Most of our, most of our problems are majorly insecurity by Boko Haram. We understand it is about it is about the same with the SARS. That's from Saliu. Um. So, um, Isi, you have a comment or um, NASA? You wanna go? 
Okay, so um, so the last person's point about the North, right? I've seen yeah. people make comments about if so, all this energy, why can't SARS put that energy into basically um, capturing the Boko Haram um, perpetrators? Why are they trying to then um, basically um, harass innocent citizens? That's where they should, they should just post them there. If they, if they have all that energy and they want to kill people. Uh, Dr. Lufumilayo, what do you think about this? If they post them to Boko See, I, I absolutely agree. Um, the governor of Bonu came out to say that personally, he wants all 10,000 of them sent to Bonu to help them to fight Boko Haram. I completely agree with his suggestion. People that have been telling me, oh, if you completely end SARS, what is going to happen to their jobs? What is going to happen? I mean, let's get serious here. Lagos State ended or Okada in some places overnight. Nobody talked about their jobs. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So this is a country that is used to unilaterally ending things over. When the government was going to increase petrol price, they didn't consult anyone. It was done overnight. That's why I keep telling people that when they come up with these stories of, oh, government needs time to implement things. It's not true. That is when they (laughs) want to lie. Yeah. If it is anything they are serious about, they implement it overnight. Now, going back to the SARS question, get all 10,000 of them. Send them to Zulu. Do you understand? Nasa. Nasa, Sorry. you have some comments with you. Okay. So Angela says, we're very selfish people. We need to go back to communal way of living. Everyone really did care about their neighbors sometime way back. Don't know when mm-hmm. we lost it. I totally agree with that. We should show more kindness. Mm-hmm. Um, Rolake says, SARS is everything. Public sector, healthcare, education, road repairs, and a long list. We have mm-hmm. to do better as a people and begin to truly care about Nigeria and its people. We have no other country. Let us make Nigeria great and lead Africa to prosperity. Then one more uh, post is, guys, once the system becomes organized, people's nerves will naturally calm down and will start behaving fine. Thanks, Chisom. I want the doctor to comment on some of the comments that we got from the audience. Okay. So, yes, um, somebody mentioned something about um, we need to love each other better. And I was, and I think Naza also mentioned it earlier. So I was going to yeah. say that, yes, every country well needs to love it, it, each other better. But, but I mean, in the last 10 days, let, let's look at things from yeah. another perspective. Young Nigerians have demonstrated an unusual sense of unity, an Very unusual true. sense of oneness, an unusual sense of patriotism that I've not seen in the history of this country already. And accountability. Do you understand? So, an accountability. So, uh, this particular lady on Twitter, FK Abudu, almost every night gives us a breakdown of monies raised, how they are spending it, how they are disbursing it. Mm -hmm. When last did your accountant general tell you whatever is going on with the monies they are spending? So, let's let's be serious here. And when it comes to, I mean, you have, you have a unit that is providing legal help, providing security, providing food, providing medical help. You have an actual helpline set Mm -hmm. up in the last 10 days. Before I came online, I found out they've set up an online radio. These are things that your government will set up a committee. Thank you. There is always a committee, one committee after the other. And young people are saying, we don't want committees. We don't have committees. And you can see how effective the protests are going. That's right. Yeah. So that tells you, you can get things done without a committee. But hmm. the government is used. And again, somebody mentioned something about old people and generational gaps and all that. And before hmm. we started these discussions, I was sort of saying it, that the generation that is leading Nigeria now hmm. is the generation that is used to military leadership and colonial masters. Yes, exactly. They are not used to anything else. This generation now, the coconut head generation, like they call it, <laughs> has only known. So, do, 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 do. I, I had a conversation yeah. with someone, and when you talk about colonial masters, they have a role to play in this and in setting up the Nigeria police force. I understand that it was set up in such a way yes. to actually create that um, master slave relationship Obviously. so that you find that they didn't create the, the police in England like that. Mm. The police actually works like a servant leader, works for the people. But in Nigeria, because they were created to actually 
oppress the Nigerians to look after the, the, can, the colonial masters you. themselves. The interests yes. of the colonial masters. I can tell you, I can tell you a little so bit. Out of time. Quickly. Yes, quickly. I don't know whether you've seen this a series on Netflix. Everyone should see it. Journey to an African Colony. Now, how they sort of started the police, what the, what the white people did, the, the colonial masters, they came into Nigeria from the south, southern Nigeria. And when they came, they came with guns and subdued certain places like Lagos. Now, with those guns, they were able to recruit people who were forcefully and, and scripted hmm. into what was called the police to defend the yeah. oppression of the colonial masters against the people. So basically, they set up a few of us. That's right. Yeah, that was working for them against us absolutely the history of the nigerian police force it was never set up to to serve and to protect exactly so we have but, to be clear their motto, their motto might be to serve and to protect mm -hmm. yeah, but it's mm -hmm. not to protect the public it was to protect yeah. the colonial masters from the public that was the history mm -hmm. Precisely. okay okay so we have so many comments and we have just like a few minutes left can you quickly take some of the comments and um from our audience Okay, so someone says, I don't think that the government is taking us any seriously. Why doesn't the government pick requests that are workable for now? For example, prosecute, prosecute the police officers who committed murder. It is, is it that, is it, it's that basic. Let them start and we would consider leaving the streets. That's from yesterday. Then Lizzie, she says, they're all working together. Even the big men at the top are benefiting from the evils and robbery of SARS units. Exactly. That is the only reason they're putting in so much effort to stop a movement without addressing the motion for the movement. Hashtag mm -hmm. NSARS. Dr. Lufmlaya, what do you think? Um, sorry, take that again, one line. <laughs> okay. Yes, so yeah. the first person just said, you know, government is taking, they're not taking us seriously. The, yeah. the requests we've made, nobody's doing anything. For example, the prosecuting the police officers who committed murder is very mm -hmm. basic. Let them start and we'll consider leaving the streets. Um, that's from yesterday. Lizzie not says, messy. you know, the big men are a part yeah. of this whole thing. I'll, and I'll, 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 I'll give you a simple example. You know, I mentioned that if these people are serious about stuff, they get it done. Mm -hmm. And I'll give exactly. another example. I already mm -hmm. said that. The idea of police, for instance, there seems to be a widespread, massive consensus that he needs for to him go. to be. Do you understand? That is a symbolic move that will tell people that they're serious and the public that it is no longer mm -hmm. business as usual. Mm -hmm. The same thing with the commissioners of police in every state where protesters have been killed. That's now, right. let's go to something else. In Anambra, again, I'll talk about this. That OC, James Unwafo, Wafo. were mm -hmm. literally shouting and shouting about this man. Do you know we just found out that this man retired from as OC of SARS. He was made a special assistant or special advisor to the, to the governor. People protested what? the first time. Yes. 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 He was made a special advisor to the governor. Knowing the kind of person he Knowing was. Knowing the kind of person he was, the kind of history he had. And mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll bust your bubble somewhere. Now, this person was a special advisor. They did a protest. The governor did not listen until the second protest, which was more massive. Then the governor sacked him. Since that time, the man has not been seen anywhere. They now, what we are him. hearing is that most likely they gave him enough time to pack his things and pro probably just disappear. Uh, no, they'll hmm. find him. Do you understand? He so my worry, my worry is that this is somebody who... As of 2012 or something, there was a report of 30 bodies found in Ezu River somewhere, credited to him. As of 2020, he was a special advisor to a sitting governor. Wow. So, and this is somebody who is known to be saying things like, I will kill you. And, and nobody will do will anything happen. about it. You will not be able to do anything. That's because, again, exactly. if you think that these people don't have the backings of the big people, then you're, you're joking. You're playing yourself. This people have, literally, sorry? No, no, go ahead. I just yeah. have more comments from our I audience. This, I think these people, they literally do the dirty job for a lot of these top politicians. It's as simple as that. They leave SAS and become bigger people or they what? start to hold bigger okay. in, in in society. Working behind the curtains. Exactly. Yes. There's another one, Yusuf Kolo. There's All right, so that's why I think you come in. <laughs> 
Yeah. My network seems to be you know, but our government is not sincere. Can you imagine the policeman that killed Colade Johnson has have been released? I know this for a fact because I do go to for prison ministry with my church, and that is the country we found ourselves. It's so bad, mm -hmm. nobody cares know about the case anymore mm -hmm. we shall win at the end of the day let them all call back Colady Johnson's case our government is hypocritical he's still talking mm -hmm. and I think finally we'll just make one more comment it says the military chiefs have not been able to curb Boko Haram they are still there not they've not replaced thousands died police chiefs continuously unable to stop police brutality yet he's still on his seat this is the origin of impunity until there are consequences, nothing will change. I think we can wrap up on that, but because this conversation is unending, we'll it's keep it. the conversations going. Thank you so much, Dr. Harvey. Thank you, ladies. The network Thank was you. a bit... <laughs> well, but we but working from home is not easy. Yeah, we managed fun, So though. we'll see you like uh, <laughs> on Friday. And as we bring another great conversation to your screen, please watch the repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m., um, it's been a very insightful conversation. I keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. It's a very, very apt quote for the times we're at. The ultimate tragedy is not the oppression and cruelty by the bad people, but the silence over that by the good people. So we'll see you live on Friday as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Dr. Harvey. Thank you, Dr. Harvey. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.